All right, guys, so here we go. We're going to be talking about this Express X21. I'm on the front of my boat in my garage right now. I'm going to go over the pros and cons of this boat, um, some of the things that uh, are good, some of the things that are bad, some of the things that are a must-have, and so on and so forth. Um, a lot of people have been asking why I made the switch to an Express boat. Well, the reality is I went out with buddy John, who's been in a few of my videos. He's got a 19-foot uh, Express, and it rode phenomenal. I've rode better than any any of the fiberglass boats I've ever been in and you know Ex Express makes a quality boat they've been in business for a while and you know the the aluminum boats are starting to take hold of the market now you know you have the Crestliner you have the Vexus you have the Tracker you have Express and Express has just been around for long enough to know that they can build a good quality boat um, but we're gonna focus on the front half for the first section of this video then we'll go to the back we're gonna talk about simple things um, talk about these rod lockers and stuff like that but let's get into the detail on that so the first thing is you know your rod straps you know you have the option to put them wherever you want which is great because I like mine way up front I'm going to be installing some over here on the passenger side and I'll go into video on that on the install of that um, with which the first thing a lot of people notice about this boat is the C deck and this C deck is amazing to stand on. I cannot tell you right now how nice it is to stand on this all day long, all night long, with tennis shoes, without tennis shoes, fishing barefoot, doesn't matter. It is comfortable. Um, I've had a couple hooks slide into it. I haven't put anything past the barb, but they pull right out. They didn't make any marks. They didn't rip or anything. So it's pretty durable. Um, so far, I haven't had any complaints about the C deck. Uh, it's Durable, it's easy to clean, take it to the car wash, grab the brush, scrub it down, pressure wash it. Don't get the pressure washer too close, but you can just scrub it down with the car brush and good to go. Um, I prefer like something more bristly, a little something a little bit firmer than just a regular car brush, um, but uh, it's really nice. So one thing to know about the boat is the one I got comes standard with this rod box with the gas shocks on it. See, this one has dual gas shocks. Well, the very first day I took this out on the water, the very first day I took it out on the water, I went fishing with my friend John, who has an express boat. He wanted to see what it was like. And we got out here, and what you guys don't realize is these lids are actually, even though they're not fiberglass, they're still pretty hefty. Um, they're, they're heavy enough that they hurt, and I learned that the hard way because this didn't have a gas shock on it right there. I actually installed that myself, but I had this flipped over and a big wave came while I was reaching down in there and it flipped over and hit me and it, it hurt pretty good, um, but it wasn't anything to really worry about, but I know if you got hit really hard, it could leave one hell of a bruise and possibly give you some trouble. Um, so installed the shocks all the way around on all the compartments on the front. To make my life a lot easier as far as um, safety and it's easier just to have them open so you can reach in there you don't have to worry about them falling on you all right so now that we've talked about the rod lockers and the uh, you know the compartments up top and we talked about the sea deck the next thing is waterproofing so one thing i didn't really know about this boat was it has a lot of issues with water getting into the seals and i talked to a few people about it and you know the best and most important thing is sealing up all the compartments. So I already got some tools, I got some white silicone, and we're gonna go in depth on what to do with this. So if you're buying an express boat, um, this is a must do. It's a cheap, easy fix, something just to do because I like things staying dry, and this is just added protection. For the most part, the boat does stay fairly dry. Um, there are, were a few issues that we'll talk about in a little bit as far as why my boat was getting wet, and I couldn't figure that out, but I solved that problem. But here we are. So the first thing I did. So the first thing I did after I noticed the uh, boat compartments were getting wet, I thought water was getting into the cracks. Right here, you can see I already silicone this. I know the lighting's not the greatest, but I put silicone all the way around all these seals, and I did silicone around every seal on every lid, and that didn't fix the problem because there were some unseen problems that I didn't even think about. If you look, if you look right here, there's a seam right there. 
and water when it runs when it runs down the deck goes in and runs back behind there so in this video we're going to do a little bit of talking about that and i'm going to show you guys the procedure as far as caulking it up but now i'm going to show you how to caulk it up really quick and that's going to be a really easy simple fix to do um, something that costs 20 bucks uh, from the factory it's not bad but that's just added assurance that everything in your boat is going to stay dry you're not going to have to worry about it so let's get this caulked up and then we'll go on to the next thing All right, guys, now that that's done, let's move on to the actual compartments themselves. Um, it's not that bad to silicone it. You know, you're going to get a little dirty. Got a little bit of silicone on my fingers. I had a tool, but um, some of the spots you have to get, you know, use your fingers to get in there. But let's talk about the compartments. So there is tons of storage in this boat. I mean, just endless storage. It should carry everything you would ever need, especially if you're a traveler. And if you want to put everything in your boat, you can go. The boat's light enough that you can just load it down with tackle, as heavy as you want. And that Yamaha back there, that 250 show, will push this boat no problem. Um, as you can see, typical rod storage is on your left side. This is where the rod tubes were. I pulled those out. I did not want the rod tubes. So if anybody wants them, if they want to pay for the shipping, they're yours. Let me know. I'll send them to you. Here is what would be considered center storage. And as you can see, there's no dividers here. Um, so there's no way to really sort out your tackle. But with an aluminum boat being so light, you want to disperse your weight. And since I'm always in the boat, I decided to put all my tackle on the left side because that way the weight is on the passenger side. And if I'm in the driver's side by myself, it helps even it out. And as far as rods go, yeah, excuse the mess. I've been drilling and putting stuff in here. But um, if you look and see, this is the one thing I really don't like. You can see how far up that storage compartment goes, but see the carpet stops. And I don't like that. So I'm going to get up in there and put some mat, because that, that's right where your rod tips rest. And I really don't want my rod tips rubbing in on the metal of the boat. So that there's a little bit of an issue. Um, it'll be easy. Just get some floor mat, you know, some kind of the, you know, like a... Just any kind of rubberized mat, just glue it down in there. That'll solve the problem. All right, so now we're moving on to the rod holder. We're going to mount this in. Uh, with the C-deck, what you want to do when you drill the hole in this, you don't want to go in forward. You want to go in reverse, kind of like countersinking and fiberglass. You drill the hole in reverse initially because if you go regular direction, you'll just tear the C-deck. And you don't want to do that. You want to make sure you penetrate it without tearing it apart. <laughs> So step one, get the drill, figure out exactly where you want to mount it. So this hole here, I don't want to drill into the C-deck. I want to put it into the aluminum, and you want to make sure that you're actually going to drill inside the boat. You're not going to drill it outside the boat, because you do that, well, you're just putting a hole in your boat that you don't need. Mark it really quick, okay, now drill the hole. Okay, I found my marking spot, put it in reverse, drill through the C-deck, forward, All right, guys, so now we got all that done. All of the compartments are all sealed up. The caulk is drying. Got my rod uh, rod holder in place. I haven't vacuumed yet, but I'll get that done here once I wrap up the video. But let's move back to the back. We're in the back now. We're in the cockpit area, and the cockpit is very simple. There's uh, not really much to be said about it other than, you know, it does what you need it to do. It steers the boat. Um, the switches are pretty simple. You have a power on, off, master power. And then uh, the nice thing is, with the master power though, say you're fishing during the day and you really don't need any power, you're trying to conserve whatever battery you have, say maybe you, you have a, leak, well, a weak start in battery in the middle of the tournament, 
Well, your aerator on auto will actually work with the power turned off. Power, power is off, aerator kicked on, and so will your auto. So that is a that is a really nice feature to have if you're trying to conserve whatever battery power you can. Um, that way you literally are just running your uh, live wells and that's that's kind of nice because there are times where you'll get out there fishing an all night tournament and you need to turn your master power off just to kind of conserve battery and that helps big time. Um, storage back here, you know, you've got two coolers. You've got one right here and then you've got and then you've got another one between the two. I use this more for a trash can. Don't really need two coolers. Um, then you also have storage underneath each of the seats. Moving over to the passenger console, you actually have a glove box here, which is nice because I have the dual console. Um, if I choose to, I can actually remove this console, a few bolts hold it on, and I can fill in the holes with some uh, putty or whatever just to kind of hide it since the boat's got this really nice textured black speckled white um, like rhino liner cover it wouldn't be hard to get some silicone some putty to fill in the holes and then if I ever want to do it or I just might put a thumb screw in there um, a black thumb screw just to hide the hole because um, considering how tight the cockpit area is I may actually remove this out um, it, it is you know it is a long boat you have a lot of room in the back you have a lot of room in the front and it is fairly wide in the middle. I mean, it's a pretty wide boat, but it still fishes kind of small. Um, like Zeus can't ride in here because there's nowhere really for him to sit. He's such a big dog, um, and trying to get him to settle down isn't exactly easy. Like my Nitro, he has plenty of room in the cockpit. Um, of course, they say you know if you have room in your cockpit, that's space wasted. You know, it's not storage area; it's just a spot where you're not really standing. You're just sitting to drive. So that's the whole mentality I can see with this boat is you don't need a big cockpit. They want the space for fishing. And I completely get that. Um, that makes sense. So I may keep this in here. I may not. haven't quite decided yet. But it is nice having a glove box. Um, next thing, we're going to talk about the biggest downfall that I've found so far with this boat as far as passenger um, storage goes obviously down here you've got plenty of space if if your co-angler shows up with a giant bag guess what hey bud shove it underneath there that's your problem to deal with um, but if he's got a small bag you've got a little compartment right here which is fairly deep goes pretty far down in there so if he brings just a little day bag you're good to go you don't have to worry about that that's uh that's kind of nice so depends on what kind of co-angler you get but the thing I really don't like is if you get one of those co-anglers that shows up with like seven, eight, ten rods, well, he's going to be SOL because here's the issue. Your rod, this is your rod holder right here. You got a strap right here to hold your rods down. But you can realistically only fit three, maybe four bait caster rod butts in there. The bait casters kind of get in the way, and it's hard for four to get in there. You can get four in there, but it's very cramped. So, as you can see, there really isn't a lot of rod storage for your co-angler. So what I would have really liked to have seen is instead of having this little compartment, which is nice for drain plugs and stuff, I would have liked to have seen this cut flush right here, and then this rod holder come up and give your co-angler about six to eight rod option you know, a little more storage, that way he can store his rods there instead of having to put them down here. Uh, that's really about it um, as far as the, you know, the co-angler issues. Um, again, the windscreen is a little short. Um, I might look into maybe getting a specialty fiberglass one to be built on there or an aluminum one that I can mold on to that and it gives you actual some windscreen deflection because in the morning when you're running don't smile because you'll look like dumb and dumber you know shit in your teeth so let's move back to my biggest problem I had with the boat um, obviously it's one of those things you wouldn't even know it if you went and test drove it it's one of those things you find out after you fish in the boat 
and you actually take it out and you fill the live wells and you go through the paces and you actually fish a tournament. Um, but knowing what I know now, it's a simple fix, but when I didn't know how to fix it, it was a pain and it actually had me kind of where I didn't even want to use the boat for tournaments and the first couple tournaments after I got the boat I actually used my other boat um, just because I wasn't sure how fit this was um, but what I'm talking about is your live wells uh, there's two overflows there's one right here and then there's one right there right where this plug is I'm not gonna pull it out but why there's two overflows I have no clue but as you can see it's a very big live well plenty big enough for two limits of bass but there is only one recirculation pump and I don't like that so I'm going to actually install a secondary circulation pump over here for the recirc just to add a little bit more oxygen in case one fails there's always two in the boat so you're ready to rock and roll you don't have to worry about that and it gets plenty of oxygen I would like to install an oxygenator too that is going to be important um, when you fish big tournaments and stuff like that you need to take care of your fish you work hard to catch them and then you need to have your live well work harder to keep them alive for you to take them back to the weigh-in. But the gripe that I had with the live well here is it wasn't holding water. And the reason it wasn't holding water, well, the first reason was the hole that they drilled for the light, which I will show you a video here now. So one thing that an, was an issue is the light in the live well. The hole in the live well that was pre-drilled to put this in was too big for the uh, for the light you know so the water was leaking right through it because the seal couldn't get a good seal so luckily I have a couple of these that are a little bit bigger diameter here at my house because I do that for people that want light live wells and so they actually the ones I have fit perfectly tight into it I'm getting ready to fill up the live wells make sure that stopped the leak but um, anyways here I'll show you so there's where the live well light was and in the backpack here the hole was so big that it actually the water was leaking out um, unfortunately that with it leaking out the nice textured uh, wrap on here when I tried to clean it up around the edge it just peeled off the whole thing so that's kind of a bummer but it's cosmetic really nothing too important so let's get the live wells filled up see if that stopped my leak nice and dry underneath that took care of that no more leaking all right so now that we're actually back um, you saw where it was leaking out of the hole I fixed it great problem solved as far as that leak went but once we got the light fixed the next big thing was I had to go around and put weather stripping around the edge because there's no ceiling on this so if you go into a sharp turn all your water would flow out of the sides of the live well or the back of the live well and you can't have that you know especially when you fill your live wells full of well water you need to save that water as long as possible but I did some weather stripping that took care of the problem now my live wells hold three quarter water no matter how rough the lake is I was out there on a Saturday in some rough water and they stayed three quarter full the entire day and I could keep my well water in the boat and didn't have to worry about it so that's really um, an important part and that was my biggest gripe as far as a boater. Uh, the next thing is this divider. I found out a fish can come through here. That's not good. So I'm going to have to find a way to like raise it up so a fish can't jump through. Because, I mean, look at that gap there. A fish can get through there. We had a fish jump up, and his gill got wedged like that. Luckily, he was making some noise, and we found it before it was too late. All right, guys, so that's really an in-depth look at this boat. Um, the battery compartment and the fuel's in the back. Nothing really to see there. Um, it's a typical boat, you know. They've got a compartment for batteries. they got a compartment for your fuel tank. The nice thing is you have an access panel to get to your fuel water separator, and if anything does go wrong with the fuel tank, you can get back there. But hopefully, hopefully this is um, a review of a boat that you might have considered getting into. I have no regrets to it. Because, yeah, the fit and finish isn't exactly that of a fiberglass boat or whatever, but this is really more or less a river boat that they're kind of diving into the bass fishing realm. And they're, they're taking a huge first step, and I would really like it if Express would reach out to me because I'd love to go over a few things with them, you know, to help them produce a little bit better boat 
that's geared directly towards the tournament angler. So with that being said, guys, I'm going to sign out here. I'm going to finish up some of this, and i got a few spots i got to finish caulking. But hopefully this video helped you understand uh, a little bit about an express boat. I mean, they're great boats, great ride, and I don't think you would be disappointed if you actually went out, test rode, and possibly made the switch from a fiberglass to an express. You know, if you're a die-hard, wannabe, pro fisherman, yeah, fiberglass might be a better option. But I have no regrets making the switch. I think if you look at some of the pros switching to aluminum boats, that kind of tells you the reliability and the you know actual quality of the boat themselves. Uh, I'm I'm happy. You know, it's gonna take some time to get used to because it is lighter and it does blow around in the wind a little bit. It's more or less the waves that really push you around. But as soon as I get my 24 volt Altrex up on front, that problem will be solved. So you guys have an awesome night, and I will see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.